Give me an answer. I mean, he doesn't even know. Wait, 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 wait. Don't okay. go away. All right. Don't go away, camera. What? We have a couple of quick hits. Why not now? Um, well, why not 1985? I don't know. They made us an offer. Yeah? And we Whose chose idea? Not... You wanted it more than anyone else, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, come on. You really? I mean, th what a wonderful idea. You don't want to take credit for the idea? Well, it's an all right uh, idea. In all, in all fairness, Mickey, it was... Go wide. Go wide. <laughs> Mickey, whose idea was In all fairness, it was a, a guy named David Fishoff. Yeah. The producer? Yeah, the producer, who last couple of years has put together a Happy Together tour, a uh, nostalgic uh, concert yeah. show that toured around the country, did very well. And somebody must have mentioned the monkeys to him. He got a hold of Peter's number. Yeah. Peter said, I know Mickey's number, and they called yeah. me. They came over to England and, and tried to talk me into it. Um, I have a, a very definitive idea of why now, myself, because... Well, Peter uh, didn't do very well, so let's hear it. <laughs> Wait a I minute, can I have another chance? No. <laughs> I think quite simply it's a combination of, of a few things. One, the 20-year anniversary. Yeah. And we've had some hardcore fans around yeah. the world that have always looked forward... 20th anniversary of the television of show. Of the television show, which was the, 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 uh, the foundation yeah. of the Monkeys. The catalog. record came out first. Yes, that's true. And was okay. selling. Yeah, that's true, too. But, but, but that Correction was also the 20th anniversary. Tor that was also the 20th anniversary. That happened more or less simultaneously. Mm. More than that, though. No, what? more than that. I think that it's... Um, uh, a lot of it had to do with MTV mm. running the series, an awful lot, uh, of the current... Uh, the scale of mm. the enthusiasm. Our MTV, fans have always been enthusiastic. For those who have not watched MTV, MTV is rerunning the old monkeys television yes. show or have been doing it what, yes. for a year or two? No, about three, four months, I okay. think. Okay, so that made it hot. And you all of a sudden you found a new audience. Yeah, and uh, so that's the other reason. And I also think it has something to do with the fact that in our business everything tends to be cyclic anyway. Yeah. Things come back around, you know. I know uh, I'm cyclic. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so, the, you know, new generations every every 20 years, 13 to 20 years yeah. or something like that, things come, come back around. And also music has come back around, yeah. back to uh, melodies and, and strong hooks, strong beats, as demonstrated by Wham, Thompson Twins, the Bangles, who, who said that yeah. they've owed their allegiance to the Muggies. Sure, all those people who've been on the broadcast talking about mm. that, I mean, a sense of reaching so those back. Are the, those are the reasons. And bribery, of course, we paid yeah. a lot of money yeah. to a lot and of you're people. Extortion. You were playing, <laughs> as producers tend to say, you're playing to sold out crowds in venues across the country. What's happening with the audience? All of those things, uh, who's in the audience? Who are these people that are coming to see you? All ages, old yeah, fans, amazing. new fans. Yeah. Six you years mean mothers old. and daughters fighting for seats? Yes. No, no. Autographs. Yeah. I want his autograph. No, I want his autograph. Give me that. My pen. daughter wants your autograph, and incidentally, can I have one for my mother? Um, <laughs> grandmothers tap their canes. Uh, the, whole, the whole gamut. It really, for one thing, I think that when anything comes up in a big way, the way the monkeys did in the first place, it yeah. naturally generates a lot of counter pressure. And uh, I mean, it was felt in any number of ways. Uh, we were a little dangerous for some, I mean, hard as it is to believe, the monkeys were a little dangerous for some people's mothers. But with the passing of years, a lot of that counter pressure dissolves. For instance, when we first toured, uh, the audience was, I would say, 99% female. And now it's like 65% that the number of males who have mm. come in started to come to the monkey concerts and standing there that, waving yeah. their hands and well, bikers and, and punk kids, you know. Well, how do you explain that? Right. Because, I, basically because I think that, um, because I, all I can say is, like I said, the counter pressure yeah. is off. That when, when it comes out and everybody says, oh, it's a teeny bop girls phenomenon, sure. boys go, I can't go. I mean, I remember, <laughs> I remember going to a concert and among the millions, I mean, well, tens of thousands of screaming teenage girls, there was one guy sitting there with his hands folded, obviously <laughs> had been dragged to the concert by his girlfriend. I am not going to be amused. Now there's guys, you know, and they're screaming, and boys and girls, they've got their arms around each other, one of them's waving and the other one's screaming. The, the, the business the demographics about, are quite wide. Yeah. I do think you're <laughs> we're we're saying See, that's, that's the word of a television producer. Yeah. You were producing television programs in London when... Yes, I, well, uh, in England, all over England. I yeah. last about 10, like a wet rug. 12 years <laughs> I've been uh, uh, over there producing and directing. Behind the camera. Oh, yeah. yeah. On the other side of the emulsion, as we say. Peter, where were you? Um, I, I, was, I think I was in some gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, I was, Things uh, weren't working out, huh? Well, it was, uh, I was doing all kinds of things. Uh, I was doing a few odds and ends as a solo performer, with a, either as a folky or with a band. Mm -hmm. Uh, in and out of a number of bands as just as a sideman and I taught school for a number of years yeah. um, and uh, so between those two things that pretty much kept me occupied what's it like now to be 20 years later 
to be at the age as you are, along with Davy Jones, and to go out and see, as you will at Wolf Trap, in this case, about 7,000 people screaming, uh, all of that old enthusiasm. Does it invigorate you? Is it the greatest kick oh, you've yeah. had in the I last mean, 20 years? It What's makes, it like? Yeah, it makes doing the show real easy because you don't have to, you don't have to push it and force it and try to work the audience up, uh, you know, to a frenzy. Yeah. Everybody, put your hands together. Are you having a good time? You don't have to do none of that because as soon as you walk on stage, yeah. it's just bananas. It must be like being reborn. I mean, exhilarating, having been away from the performing aspect and to come back with that well, kind Peter, of success. Uh, has I know he's continued, but, but, uh, but not a very successful enthusiasm. tour with Davey just recently, but, but uh, speaking for myself, it was real difficult. It was yeah. getting out there on stage, even with all that, in, that enthusiasm, was, was, wasn't easy. I was very self-conscious. I was going, they're all watching me. <laughs> what am I going to do with my hands? Yeah. I was, it was very, <laughs> very yeah. difficult to, and I'm still having some problems at times, uh, certain songs, certain moments when I just kind of don't know what to do with myself. And that's just from not having done it for 15 years. Our conversation with two members of the Monkees continues in just a moment. Let me just come back to a point we talked about for a minute. You had some reluctance to do this? Yes, um, I was uh, very busy at the time in England and, and had a couple of television series that I was in production on. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to be doing one right now. Oh, in fact, I'm late. <laughs> um, and I had to say no, I had to beg off the series. And I was reluctant because I've developed a fairly successful career over there as a producer-director. And so suddenly to just disappear for three or four months. So it was a major decision to make. And I said no a couple of times. And, and finally, it was my wife that talked me into it and said, um, uh, oh, go on. Let's take all the kids. I have three little children. <laughs> yeah. Let's take all the kids They're and gorgeous. a nanny. We've seen them. And yeah. uh, let's go and tour America. We'll have a lovely summer vacation. Well, are you glad you did it? I mean, was she nanny. right? Well, they're having a great time. I am ruined. <laughs> but they're having a wonderful time. The kids think that America is nothing but amusement parks and swimming pools. <laughs> it's a great summer, though. Davey is, uh, is here with you. Now, Michael Nesmith is, is out in Los Angeles, I guess, making music video. I spoke to him just two days video. ago. He was in New York, actually. Yeah, but he yeah. travels back and forth. He's, yes. He didn't join you for what reason? No, oh, quite simply that, uh, well, two reasons. A, he just doesn't do that anymore at all. He doesn't perform or sing or play or record. Uh, much at all, but also he's um, busy producing um, uh, films uh, himself, and and he said I just can't, I can't yeah. possibly break away, and I know how he f how he feels because if this tour would have happened uh, a couple of months ago, I couldn't have done it either for the same reason. I was committed to to projects. Does it end when the summer tour ends? You've got a single out called what's the name of the single? That here? was then. This is now. That was then. Peter this is I. now. Both the two of you together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's number 48 with a bullet. 68. Or 68 yeah. with a bullet started out as when 88. When the show airs, who it's, knows? It, it's hot. <laughs> so the two of you have got a single. So we know what's going to happen. But what happens to the monkeys? I mean, you have a musical yeah, career. That's a good question. Uh, uh, the monkeys uh, doesn't really exist as a, uh, as a kind After this of entity. Yeah. Um, it's whenever we get together, we're the monkeys. We're not together, it just they don't exist, except on film and record. It's like, where does a candle go when it goes out? Yeah, it, <laughs> <laughs> it just, uh, it's very good, very zen. He's very clever, this yeah. boy. Needs to get some new uh, clothes done. But Jesus. so there may not be monkeys <laughs> Yes, there may be. Together we're, we're talking about a film. Summer. We're talking about film and new, new series and new movies and records and more touring and goodness knows. It's happened so fast, you see. And it was very spontaneous, too. We didn't know when we were booking the tour that the MTV was going to run the show. And MTV didn't know we were on tour. And suddenly it all just exploded. And so that's been very gratifying, too, because it's been very spontaneous. It hasn't been promoted or contrived. Uh, it was, it's all happened very... What is extraordinary about the monkeys for people who were not alive in 1966 is that in 67, you four sold more records than the Beatles and the Rolling Stones combined. Mm. You had four number one hit singles in that two-year period. I mean, the success was extraordinary. What ended that success? I basically always maintain that it just had a natural half-life. And it that the half-life went below the critical point and took about two, three years to happen, four maybe, all told. I and agree. Then, I think everything has a natural half-life. And ours and was shorter than most because, because of it, what, was how, how it was put together. so intense. And it was, it was the first time anybody had attempted to do a television show, yeah. which takes 12 hours a day, and record, which takes eight hours a day, and rehearse, which takes 
10 hours a day. And, and to go on the road. Somewhere down the line, we ran out of hours. hours a day, right? well, and it you, just burned out. And you, you were picked because you were actors or because you were singers? Yes. Personalities. Yes. 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 <laughs> actors and singers. Which? Personalities. Yes. No, both. Yes. Both. <laughs> Because yeah. uh, did I hear that Charles Manson tried out for the television? Yes, I've, but we don't think I don't that's think true. that's true. I think that's a uh, some gremlin in somebody's... Paul Williams tried out? Yes, did that's he? true. That's right. what, what's interesting is the stories that I have read about some sense of the evolution that there was, after you were created, the music was pretty good because it was written by people like... Mm. Uh, Carol who? King, Neil Carol Diamond. King, Neil Diamond. Harry Nielsen. Harry Nielsen. Paul Williams. Neil Paul Sadaka. Williams. Neil Sedaka, Neil Diamond, did Neil Diamond write also? Neil Diamond. What an incredible group of people writing the songs. Mm. You were not trained musicians. Michael probably was more trained. Was no, that's more, not true at all. That's not true. Michael was, Michael was a trained musician, a folk well, musician. Peter is the, probably the best and okay. most highly trained musician of, of the, the group. Yeah, as, yeah. as instrumentalists, I'm the most highly trained of us. Even at that time you were. Oh, oh yes. Far and away. Yeah. I haven't had any training since. Okay. I um, played guitar, a little Spanish classical, and I played rock and roll guitar in a group before the Monkees called, called Mi Mickey and the One Nighters. And you also yeah. belong to a group, group called The Missing Links, yes, that was which is too ironic. <laughs> uh, but essentially, yes, David and I. Laughing I out there. Sorry. <laughs> essentially, David and I were actors, more or less, yeah. with musical tendencies. Peter and Mike were musicians with acting tendencies. And the show was cast like any other television show, mm. like Star Trek. Yeah, it was cast by Rafelson and Snyder? Yeah, mm -hmm. and Columbia TV. Yeah. yeah, and they went on and used the money they made from the Monkees television show to produce Easy Rider, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which generated enough for five easy pieces, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, and Rafelson made uh, King of Marvin Gardens. And Your patrimony is extraordinary. Isn't, isn't it? it wonderful? Yes, the patrimony. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you mean the patrimony? <laughs> yeah. We'll be right back. The monkey, stay with us. Mary, Mary, where are you going to? Was there creative tension because you'd been created sure. for this television show, and yet as, as you got more popular, you became more interested in being taken in seriously in a different way, et cetera? Well, so that's different for each of us, and of course there was creative tension. Uh, you show me the set where there are the, sh or the action, uh, where there isn't creative tension, I'll show you a very dull act. How was it reflected, though, manifest among um, the monkeys? I think uh, uh, no more or less than anyone else. Uh, we, it was a difficult position to be put into because as it started out essentially as a television show, it quickly became much more than that. We became a group. We rehearsed, we recorded all the songs, we went out on the road and, and played, God, a hundred and so concerts the first yeah. year. And uh, whereas most rock and roll groups kind of grew up together or maybe they were brothers or friends. Or, you were created out of some producer's imagination. Well, no, we were put together like any television show, yeah. like Bonanza, you know, I mean, so Actually, Lauren Green and Michael Landon and all those people showed up one day and said, hi, yeah. Lauren Green, hi, Mickey Donald, yeah, Peter yeah, yeah, Tork, right. you guys are Bonanza, you guys are Star Trek, you guys are the monkeys. So that was fairly straight ahead. Yeah. When we started having to live together and work together and do music together and, and, and become much, much closer, a closely knit uh, unit, then, yeah, I mean, there was a tremendous amount of creative tension, but, but it was all, it all worked for, for the positive. There was very very little negative mm -hmm. creative tension, if you know what I mean. Well, that Tony is really a killer. He's a dirty, sadistic rat, and he's full of hate and malice. And, oh, hi, Tony. <laughs> I decided since you're hot, we better pick up the stuff tonight. Uh, I uh, decided we were going to pick up the stuff tomorrow night, and uh, I, uh, what I say goes because I'm the boss, and uh, anything you can say or do is going to change that. We pick it up tonight. I'll get my coat. What? happened when it came to an end? Did somebody just say... Essentially, Peter quit. <laughs> you just he... said, walked away. I walked out of it, yeah. Why? Well, I, at the time, I was believed that the, uh, the business of having a, an organic rock group was, uh, was of paramount moral importance. Uh, something that, as you may be able to judge, I have since abandoned. Um, <laughs> I, and uh, but at the time I thought it was really critically important yeah. and uh, we'd made one album in the studio together and I said let's go back let's go back and they went no you know and they um, be, is who? Being Mickey, and, three. Mickey and yeah. Davey and Mike all said no Mike wanted to produce himself uh, Mickey we was wanted to tired to death and, our own you know and, and Davey yeah. didn't want to be banging a tambourine for 50 takes which is what he did for the first album that we headquarters which is the album that we made in the studio yeah. ourselves 
and uh, he was sick of banging a tambourine. And he said, I can't do that anymore. And Mickey was like, never took himself seriously as a drummer, and so he thought that we'd be better off without. And we went into what was, uh, I see, as a mixed mode. We had another drummer, but I always got to play as much keyboard and guitar or bass as I wanted. And uh, Mike produced his own records over in the corner. And, uh, you know, we assembled the albums from whatever came up. And I, I, if I had known then what I know now, I probably would have been satisfied with that. That's not to say that the monkeys would have survived. If I hadn't quit, I don't think they would have. I think that... Uh, we also were getting pretty fed up with doing the television <laughs> show. Um, it, we wanted to go on to do something new and more innovative. Yeah. NBC in Columbia, of course, said, why? Yeah. It's so successful, you know, but, and again, in, in retrospect, we probably should have gone on and done another couple of years. We, we said we didn't want to do the same show again. We wanted to now go on and do something even more innovative. And we came up with an idea, uh, a couple of ideas, and um, one of them actually d uh, became, not didn't become, but one of them was like Laugh-In. Laughing came just after, yeah. towards the end of the monkeys, and that was the kind of thing that we were heading towards too. It was a very uh, episodic, non sequitur kind of show. But they said, "No, we have a we have a winning horse here. Why do we want to change it in the middle of it?" Which is is very right. And in retrospect, I think we should have maybe stuck with it a, another year or so. But who knows? Mm. If we had, we might not be here today, because you know there's that old cliche: you should always leave them wanting, and we certainly did that. I and we didn't milk it. We didn't, you know, you, you run these things into the ground. If you look at the shows that we did toward the end of, made toward the end of our second year, I think you see a much better TV show than those we made at the beginning of the first year. As uh, we didn't know what we were doing, we became, we became confident. Toward the end, we were playing on the business of being a TV show. And if you saw the thing we called the fairy tale episode, that had all cardboard sets and uh, Mickey playing Little Red Riding Hood going, uh, Mama, Bear and, Mama Bear and Baby Bear wanted me out of there, but Daddy Bear kind of wanted me to stick around. <laughs> <laughs> kind of no, this kind of funny stuff. And I thought that we really developed some real interesting variations on what we were doing. And, and like Mickey, I would love to have seen what would happen if we'd stuck with that a little bit longer. In some ways, that might be a bigger deal. Was it hard on you when it was over? Well, again, I mean, you have to ask we, one of us yeah. because it's, there's no it group answer. Was it hard on you, Peter? Um, no, it wasn't particularly hard on me. Uh, as a, at the time, I didn't think it was hard on me. Um, I, uh, but uh, but I did not know very well what I was doing. I wanted to go back to the street. Mm. I was happy in my Greenwich Village hippie days. Let me go back to passing the basketball. Well, you can't go back, mm. as some sage once said. And uh, and <laughs> I broke. Yeah. But I, so I spent those in between years trying to yeah. make the difference up. And you, was it hard on you? Oh, after the monkeys? Yeah. Um, n not initially. Uh, I just recuperated for yeah. a couple of years. It I took just, you how long to I find yourself? I played tennis for two years. And then after that, I started thinking, hmm, now what am I going to do? And I started directing on the monkeys. I'd been given yeah. a chance to direct on that show. And I thought, geez, I really like that. That's kind of what I think I want to do. At that time, I'd been an actor mm. for 15, 17 years. Um, so I thought, that's where I want to be behind the cameras now, where the power is, <laughs> you know, produce my own shows. And that's when I started heading myself in that direction. It wasn't until I went to England uh, about 10, 12 years ago that that finally all, all kind of came together. And I, ha and I haven't uh, done any performing until now. It's good to see you back. Uh, some you. say that success is sweeter the second time around. It then. certainly <laughs> is. Ole. We thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for good your joining